So today in this video, we're going to be working on Ryan's FRS, and he's going to tell us a little about what we got going on today. What we're going to be starting with is sway bars, end links, and then the additional bushings attached with those. After that, we'll be moving on to the side markers to replace the ugly orange OEM markers. And then we will also be fixing the gasket between the header and the overpipe as we kind of rolled over it in the last video and broke it. So yeah, hopefully that that'll fix an exhaust leak. <laughs> Alright, so a little bit of maintenance and then a lot of uh, fun stuff. So yeah, it should be, uh, should be a fun little video. So you're probably asking yourself, isn't it easy to replace the sway bars, bushings, and end links? Well, you for a novice. bet your ass it is. <laughs> probably not, but for <laughs> us, uh, I've done lots of things. So you're going to see some more things get done today. And yeah, it's pretty straightforward. Things so, done. We got this. Oh yeah. All right, let's get started. All right. So you can see this is with it off. And how it looks a lot darker, nice and much more sleek look to it. And that's with the bulb on, so you get the full LED effect and whatnot. So, still keeps the amber so that it's nice and uh, safety inspection legal or whatever, because we live in Virginia, so you got to keep an amber side marker. But, yep, that's the finished look of that, and uh, now we'll go ahead and uh, move on to those sway bars. Alright, so just a quick little update. Um, what we've done so far is I dropped the heat shield so that we can start working on replacing these gaskets. You can see the pipe is just chilling since we got all the bolts undone, because initially we were just going to replace the gasket right here. I don't know if you can see that <clears throat> right there from the overpipe to the header. But then I realized that this gasket back here was pretty bad, which I'll show you. Um, this was the front gasket. As you can see, it's pretty, pretty beat. You can see where the exhaust leak was, where all the suit was and everything like that. And then this one was the other gasket. Um, you can also see on this where it was leaking. So new gaskets like this one's uh, the header to overpipe, and this one is the overpipe to uh, catback um gasket so pretty obvious garbage not garbage so we're gonna <laughs> we're gonna finish putting the um uh new gaskets back in uh bolt that up and then once we do that we're gonna start actually working on the um sway bars which is the last thing we got to do so i don't know if you can see me or not because it's getting dark but we uh finished up the gaskets on the exhaust so he's gonna start it up we'll get like a cold start and then Maybe even rev it, I don't know. Next thing on the do-do list is sway bars. Um, it's pretty straightforward, I feel like. So we've got two bolts on the bar on this end, and we've got where it connects to the end link, and then the control arm. Um, so we're just going to unbolt those couple things, and then pull the sway bar out, and then we'll put the new one in. So, yeah, not too big of a deal. Um, it's getting dark and still a little rainy out, so we do want to try and finish this up pretty quick. So I might not record as much. Apologies. So we finished putting the rear sway, uh, rear sway bars back in, and now we're on the front. And I just wanted to show you the way you do this. We've got a six millimeter uh, hex Allen key, right? And you want to put that in the middle of this bolt here, and then a 17 millimeter wrench. Uh, I got the ratcheting wrench. I mean, you can use whatever if you have to, but ratcheting wrench works pretty well. And then you, what that does, is it's it, uh, it holds the bolt in place so that it doesn't spin because these are basically free spinning on the, in the end links. So it holds it in place while you can loosen the, uh, the nut to finish disconnecting <clears throat> the sway bar from the end link. 
And uh, once we've done that, we're going to have to go under the car. There's about eight bolts to unbolt these subframe pieces, and then you drop the bar with those, and then we'll just switch the bars out and then bolt it all back up. So that's kind of where we're at now. So just wanted to show you that, uh, that little bit with, uh, with this, because sometimes people uh, aren't aware of that. All right, so we just wanted to show you guys a comparison between the small and the, well, the old and the new sway bar, so you can see this is significantly thicker. Uh, I've got new bushings going in, and that's what I'm working on now, but we just want to give you a quick comparison between the two. Essentially, this is just those subframes up underneath um, the car, then that's what supports the sway bar, so you drop these eight bolts, and then the whole assembly comes out, and then there's two bolts on each side, and then that's how you separate the sway bar from the, uh, from the subframe connectors. So once you've done that, you uh, just switch the bars out, put your new bushings in, make sure you got them nice and lubed up. Just get a nice little splooge. Yeah, get in there. You know what I'm saying? Yeah. <laughs> All right, but once we do that, we'll just re-bolt the um, sway bar into the car, and then that's it. Put the tires on, call it a day. It's late. Okay, so way later than it should have been. <laughs> Um, that front sway bar, we oriented it uh, incorrectly like two times, so I, well actually only once. We put it together and went to put it on the car, um, so just a note to self for anybody that goes to do this, um, you want to pay attention to how the sway bar sits in the car, right? Um, <clears throat> we put it together properly the first time, went to go put it in and thought it was upside down because we actually had the subframe connectors upside down, but didn't realize, so we pulled it back down. Pulled it all apart, re-put the sway bar back together, went to put it back in the car again, and it was still upside down. So we had to pull it back out a third time to correctly orient it. Or was it four times? That was the third time. Third time? Yeah, so we had to do it like three times to get it properly oriented. Because we had it right the first time, just went to go mount the subframe uh, connectors improperly. So just word of the wise, but uh, everything's finally done. Um, it's a little late, so we're not going to be able to get any like after footage or anything like that, like reaction type videos, but just going to torque the wheels and call it a night. So, yeah, um, hopefully for anybody that actually might uh, attempt to, you know, do this themselves, maybe there was something that was helpful, hopefully, um, but we weren't really going for a how-to install. Yeah, it was just kind of like a vlog or whatever. So, yeah, I hope you guys liked the video. Um, Feel free to like, comment, subscribe, whatever you feel you like to do, and yeah, stay tuned for more videos. We always try to keep uh, keep some of this stuff coming your way. So, thanks for watching, guys. We'll catch y'all next time. Peace.